Today I'm going to be sharing some pastel tips with you and some tips on creating a background using pan pastels. So for this piece I decided to use white pastel mat and I chose that because I wanted the colors in the pumpkin to be really bright and vibrant and that will make my background look even more muted and toned down. Now the look that I'm going for for the background is sort of like a foggy, creepy background. So when I'm laying my brush strokes down with that big soft tool, I don't want to be too smooth about it. I'm actually letting some of the brush strokes show through and that's going to help add to the fogginess or the foggy look in the background. And even when I go to blend it out after when I blend with my finger, I don't want to blend it out completely smooth because that's going to get rid of that foggy look. And I want to make sure that I keep it more bright in the middle and then as it goes to the sides, it's going to be a little bit darker. This is going to help add depth to our background. Now I'm using one of the big soft tools that come with the pastels, the pan pastels. And I like using the bigger tools when I'm doing just a flat background like this where I just wanna lay some color in. And then I can come over top with the trees later. But using this big tool just allows me to get as much pastel down as I can. Pastel matte is my favorite surface to use with pastels and especially pan pastels like I'm using here because it just really grips the pastel quite a bit and you're able to get quite a few layers on it and still be able to go over top with pastel pencils like you'll see me do further in this piece. Unlike pastel papers like the Canson Me Tiens, which I still like and is a great paper, but you definitely won't be able to get as many layers with that paper, maybe one to two layers at the most, and your pastel pencils just won't have enough to stick to the surface of that. Then I just use my finger to soften out the pastel. Now you could use a cotton bud, or a blending stump, but I find using my finger is just fine most of the time and I just want to push the pastel down into the tooth of the paper so that I still have some tooth to grip the pastel that I'm going to put on top and the pastel pencils. Now here I'm just going in with my tracing and transfer paper. So I've already drawn out my sketch onto tracing paper and I'm using white transfer paper underneath just to get the outline of the trees in and this is the easiest way to do it um, when doing a background like this. And now I'm taking those smaller soft tools that I was talking about and I'm starting to put the trees in here and I want to make sure that I vary the color of the trees by meaning I get some lighter ones so they're pushed more further to the back and then the darker trees are going to come forward more and be more in the foreground so it's going to create some depth in our piece and in our background. I also want to make sure that I'm bringing the tree edges right up to that white graphite paper where it laid down and covering up those edges so that we don't have any white outlines around our trees. And I'm using the square soft tool for this just because it's got that nice sharp edge on the top of it. So I'm using that mostly to lay in the trees. And I'm sort of just going back and forth putting some light trees in, putting some dark trees in, and just sort of seeing how it looks. Another cool thing with the soft tools is you can actually take them and wash them out under the sink and you can use just a bar of soap or the pink soap from Mona Lisa that you can use to wash your brushes. And the pastel will stain the soft tools, but once you wash it out, um, they will be completely clean so you can still go over top with any colors and the tools will just be stained but they'll act like they're just brand new. And as long as you're not pushing too hard onto the pastel mat with them, so I sort of like to slide the tool over the pastel mat and when I realize no more pastels getting off, I don't push any harder, I'll just go back and pick up more pastel. And that way these um, tools I can reuse for projects and they've lasted me quite a while. Now I'm going in with my pastel pencils and I like to use the Stabilo Carbothellos and the Faber-Castell Pit Pastel pencils. Here I'm just taking a couple of light gray colors and I'm using them to sort of get some background twigs in, like some background branches that are going on. And again, I'm just using my finger just to lightly push that pastel into the background. I don't wanna uh, smudge it out too much but just to lightly push it back so it sort of fades into the background. And then I'm coming on top with a darker gray. This is almost like a really dark, cool gray. And I'm creating some more of those like um, twiggy branches and I want these to look almost like 
spidery tree branches coming out and I want them to kind of just go all over the place and sort of help create that like creepy background. And now that I'm looking back at this piece, I would go back and add them in a couple more areas and I probably will do that on the left hand side. There's just some that are sort of like longer branches going across, but I think I'll add some shorter ones in there as well, just to break it up a little bit. And then again, I just come over top with my finger here and I'm just lightly pushing that into the pastel mat and I'm just using a paper towel off to the side to wipe my finger off if I just get too much pastel on my finger. And because we were pretty gentle with the layers that we put down in the beginning, my pastel pencils are going over top of this no problem. If you guys enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe to the channel for more art-related videos, and thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye!